off 37. Will it give me 37? Now 38 in the back again. It's your turn. 38. Now 39. Will it give me 39? Now 40. Will it be the 40? Will it give me 40? Will it be the 40? 40. 40. Will it give me 40? I got a 40. Will it give me 41? Will it be the 41? I got a 41. Now 42. Will it give me 42? Will it be the 40? 42. Anybody want to give me 42? So she came down and asked if I could possibly um, sell her three eggs. Well, she had pretty small hands, so I wasn't sure if she could handle three eggs, but I, I let her have three, three eggs, and, and as soon as she got them in her hand, uh, one of them slipped out and she dropped it. And I guess I got a little mad at her, because the, the story has gotten around that I screamed and yelled at her. And then she asked if I was going to clean it up off the floor, and I told her it was none of her business whether or not I was going to clean it up off the floor, and I just told her to get out of here, and, and I marked down on the account book for her parents how much all three eggs cost. Yeah, well, he didn't tell it all. He dropped the egg. Now, I didn't. Davy was always in a hurry. What do you want? What do you want? He didn't have any time for children. And then he was putting them in a sack. He just put them in the sack. And one dropped on the floor. He kept putting them in the sack. They had a dozen eggs. And I said to him, why don't you clean up that mess? When are you going to clean that up? <laughs> that bothered me. And he said, none of your damn business, none of your damn business. It scared me then. I thought the devil was after me. <laughs> and I, I ran home and told Mother, <laughs> you didn't speak very nice to me. I was born in Missoula. My mother came to, from Garnet a week before I was born. I was born at St. Pat's Hospital on... Uh, of March 2nd, 1917. And mother then, my uh, folks knew the shepherd, shepherds, they ran a, had a hotel here in Missoula. And uh, so mother was gonna take me up to garden. She said, no, Jenny, my mother's name was Jenny. You can't take Jen Jane until she's a month old because you want to get to have a good start in life, you know, because March and going up Garnet was lots of snow yet. So she, we stayed at the Shepherd Hotel for a month and then we went to Garnet. And I went to Garnet in a, in a wagon drawn by two horses. It wasn't a wagon, it was a sleigh because it was still ice and snow on the road. But otherwise, they went with a wagon, you know. But wintertime, they always used to slay. It was a booming little town. There was a thousand people there, you know, and mother went there. They had a little butcher shop, and they had a couple of stores, and a barber shop, and in saloons, there was 13. They had lots of saloons. The bachelors all went to the saloons. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> they had nothing else to do. For recreation, go and have a beer or a whiskey or whatever they drank, I don't know. Had a jail, but nobody was ever in it. <laughs> I guess in early days there was somebody in it, but I, not when I was a little girl, there was never anybody in it. But uh, my our home in Garnet it was such a neat little house, one of the nicest houses in Garnet. It was three rooms with the kitchen, now there's only two left. And it was, we had the, in the bedroom was the bed and the dresser. And then the mother had two trunks. Didn't, I don't know how it all fit in there. Didn't look that large to me the other day when I was there. But anyway, then on the side there was a closet. Uh, it wasn't a closet, but it was hangers. And then mother made a curtain that covered the clothes. And, uh, and then there was a, well, they called it a commode. It had a wash basin, you know, and a big pitcher on the top. There was plenty of room. My gosh, I don't see how it worked now. And then you come out of the door, and it was then it was a chair, and then there was a davno, and they called it a sanitary couch. Uh, that day, in those days, that's what they called it. And then it opened into a bed. You could t let the sides, the back down and the sides up and made a bed. Then, and then on the wall, she had a hanger for pictures. And uh, that was all full of pictures of the family and most of fa mostly family. And, uh, and then they had, she had her sewing machine. 
happens under that window that I'm not good on my directions now, not which is <laughs> east and west, but it was on that side of the building. It was next to the stove. We had that airtight heater. Then, oh boy, that kept it nice and warm in wintertime. We never were cold. My first lit teacher's name was Cl uh, Clary. She taught me how to, to do arithmetic and to read. She had to walk up to school every morning, up that long hill there. And then uh, the, she had to build a fire in, her, in the stove in the, in the school. They, have it, they had it hard, I tell you. And to get it warm for us by the time we got there, so it would be warm. And you had to keep putting wood in all day long. And we, we had recess, just like every school. We'd play games out in the snow. And then I'd come home at noon and have my lunch. She always had potato soup for me. I love potato soup. Thought that was the only kind. I, she made it so good, and I, she always had it for me. Oh, I was going to tell you about Mother, she, Mr. Davy. For one uh, Thanksgiving, he wanted to get a turkey, big turkey, and uh, have Mother cook it and serve it at the hotel to all the bachelors. They could all come and have dinner if Mother would cook the dinner for him. He said, she said, yes, I'll do it. They, and uh, she cooked the turkey and had everything, the mashed potatoes, and sweet potatoes, and cranberry sauce and salad, and, and, and she had pumpkin pie for dessert. Made the whole thing herself, bless her heart. And then I helped with that, I set, helped mother set the table. And the old bachelors all came in the dining room and had, had their dinner. Mr. Davy invited them all. It was such a wonderful dinner. And those men appreciated it so much that they, because they would never have had anything like that themselves. So it was pretty nice that Mother did that for them. Then I, in other days, I would go to um, my dad's mine. I loved to do that. I could walk there. I often walked there all by myself, as I knew the way. I'd go up by the hotel, up on that hill of, uh, by the hotel, and walk along, go to my dad's mine. And uh, I'd go in the tunnels with him. I'd go in on that uh, ore car. They had a special car for ore. I'd get it, he'd put me in it, and I would ride in. But then coming out, he would be full of ore, because I'd watch he and Pete. Pete Chipler was always with him. They were the two partners. And, they'd, and I would stay in there and watch them drill holes to put the powder in, to blow it up. And so they could have, yeah, but we'd always get out in time and we always had, if there was six holes, we had to count, make sure that all six went off so before they could go in because of dangers. But anyway, mother was kind of worried about me but going into the mine, but I was with my dad, so. And then I would have to pretend I was, I'd have to walk out with him, you know, by the side of him. I was pretending I was pushing, helping to push that car. They had to push it by hand, full of ore. Then they had to sack that ore. And I watched him do that. And that was pretty neat. And then they'd have to sew it up at the top after it was full of ore. Then they'd sew it up with a big needle. And it was just, I just thought that was more fun than anything, to be able to do that with my dad. Poor man. Walk into those mines every morning it go to to work in the dark and come home in the dark. In wintertime, you know, I had to walk. They always had to carry a lantern with him. So dark. What they won't do, <laughs> try to find some gold. 
Well, I've enjoyed telling you about my experiences and my days in Garnet. It was wonderful living to the way I did. I think back and I think how, how wonderful it was.